You're listening to Bible Prophecy Daily, a weekday podcast where Bible prophecy matters and matters greatly. Welcome back to another episode of Bible Prophecy Daily. I'm Jake McCandless, and we are continuing a series of episodes where we're looking back at the COVID pandemic, how it impacted church, how it impacted faith, the continued fallout within the church, and looking at it as a warning shot, as a shot across the bow of what is to come, and reflecting on the lessons that we can learn as watchmen and watchwomen. I hope you caught that previous episode. If not, you really need to check it out because I spent a lot of time talking about our calling, our responsibility. Whether you feel a definitive call to be a watchman, to know the scriptures, to seek the Lord, know what's coming, and to help warn others. Or if the Lord has led you into those things, then you still have a responsibility. Where to warn, where to help prepare. So as co-laborers, helping prepare others, what can we learn? That's where we're going today. As I've shared before, I am part of a team called Last Days Overcomers with other hosts on this podcast, Nelson Walters, Marquis Laughlin, and we're doing conferences across the country, launching out in June this month, June 10th, we are in Cincinnati. So depending on when this airs, I hope I've gotten to meet you or will get to meet you if you're in the Cincinnati area and beyond. But the end of July, we will be in Northwest Arkansas, my neck of the woods. And in August, we'll be in Minneapolis with more dates to be announced. We hope to see you there. Yeah, I just stole from Nelson's right there, didn't I? Okay, I want to pick up where we were last time. The two main takeaways that I hope that you got out of that previous episode was one, to be challenged to look back at this COVID experience and think about the lessons that could impact you as a watchman. For me, I call these the lessons on being warned, trying to warn, and then seeing. Because as many believers and God's people in the past have been led to do what we're doing to be watchmen, they've not had the opportunity. Very few have had the opportunity to be warned about something to begin the course of trying to warn people and then seeing something like it come to pass as we did with COVID. So what are the lessons that we can learn? So that was the first takeaway from last episode. I hope that you've thought on that. If not, get to it. And again, some of you, I know you may be new to this game. Maybe COVID woke you up and that is awesome. And I'm glad that you're here. And so part of this episode isn't just to be a warning of the past moving forward, but it's to help you to get where we were before COVID. So lesson one, look at the lessons. Not just Don't just take mine, but look at yours. And second, the takeaway I hope that you had was you were right. To step back and gain some confidence. You are hearing from the Lord, and I closed out with encouraging you to whatever you were doing beforehand, before COVID, that led to you being warned and warned accurately, lean back into that. Don't quit doing that. So I want to walk through what I was leaning into. I know it's going to be the same for some of us. Some of us, you may have your some things that the Lord was doing in your life that you could add to this. I'd love to hear that. If you're able to place in the comments, would love to hear that. Love to get the feedback. And again, if you're new to this watchman calling and responsibility, this is how I got there. Now, one of the things I touched on also in that previous episode is the real struggle and debate over how do we hear from the Lord? How do I know if I'm hearing from the Lord? And then I know it gets in debates on callings and gifting and and, and all those things. But a verse that has been extremely helpful for me comes from John 16. Of course, John 14, 15, 16, Jesus talking to the disciples before he's arrested, before he goes to the cross. 
and he's instructing them on how to continue following when he's gone. And it's here where we hear about the promise of the Holy Spirit, how we need to abide in the Lord. In John 16, Jesus is continuing to talk about what the Holy Spirit's going to do. And in verse 12, we begin to read, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. This has been a comforting verse for me because likely you have experienced what I have experienced as I've tried to warn others, as I've tried to speak on these things that I've learned within Scripture, that the Holy Spirit's been guiding me in, that we're seeing in the world, and begin to share that with others, there's resistance, right? There's challenges. But I believe all the arguments of how we hear about prophetic things and things coming in the future, all that stuff just gets washed away when we realize every believer has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And part of what the Holy Spirit does in guiding and convicting us is he guides us in what is yet to come. Therefore, on the menu, a possibility for all believers is to be guided in those things to come. Now, does that mean all the answers? No. The Lord has a way of giving us just what we need at the right time. But if we lean into the Lord, part of that experience is we're guided into the things to come. I don't know about you, but for me, that was like relief just rolls over me in that verse of, hey, I'm, I'm not crazy. I, I've, you know, reading in the word, heard a message on things to come and something stirring within me that I can't let go. It's not just craziness, but that's how the Holy Spirit works. That's how it's meant to be. So a couple things that looking back led to me realizing my role as a watchman. And I've shared my story. There was a full-time senior pastor who got convicted beginning in 2012, especially fully in 2014, launched a ministry called Stand Firm, began writing on these things. 2016 just began doing that full-time. I think two of the big things leading up to it was I had been a student of the Word. I was blessed to grow up in church and then did my undergrad in Bible and seminary, all that, that stuff. But through that, got an appreciation for not just the Word, but for rightly dividing the Word, for the authority of the Word. Like going to Scripture, it should guide our life. And so when we read prophetic things, when we read warnings, that carries a lot of weight because it's coming from the authoritative voice of the Lord coming from Scripture. It was a journey to get to that point. Another big part leading me to being warned and trying to warn and then seeing began in eighth grade. I had a youth pastor at the time who really pushed and helped us develop devotional times, quiet times, just a regular time with the Lord. And we would get these just little booklets that have just a paragraph in it and a verse. But that semester, I had a study hall. And so in the midst of catching up on homework, I'd pull out my Bible and pull out that little devotional book and do it every day. And when you seek the Lord, He shows up. The Lord began to just move. And, you know, it's always hard to put into words, but the Holy Spirit began guiding my life. And I was just blown away. God's real. And after experiencing that, I, I couldn't get it out of me. And since that point, I don't want to go into the years, but uh, anyway, I'm turning 42 in a few weeks. That whole time, it's been a constant journey of trying to have that daily time with the Lord. Time of prayer, not just asking for stuff but seeking the Lord and time in the Word. And it's not always been a smooth time. In 2014, me and my wife made a commitment to each other that regardless of what happened, what we got done during the day, we would have a devotional time. You would think, as a full-time pastor, 
having a devotional time, quiet time would be, you know, easy, right? That's your job. You're getting paid to do that. But it was a battle. Sometimes it would be 445, needing to go home at 5, but I'd make sure at least I got it in that day. And it was a battle. I began because I would have a hard time as I begin my prayer time in the mornings. You know, I think prayer is something that happens all day, right? We're continuously seeking the Lord in conversation with the Lord. But I believe there needs to be that kickoff time. And so my kickoff time, I begin writing out my prayer. Often verbatim. Begin keeping these prayer journals. 2014, we began to hold each other accountable, and it became very consistent, and it began to transform our lives, began to transform how the Lord was revealing things, leading things. The growth was just insane, and it continues today. Again, not always smooth. Does it happen every day? Unfortunately, not. Now, I am. I do want to brag a bit. They said they didn't miss a day in May, so I hope I can keep, <laughs> keep this up, but So when I say lean in to what got you there, lean in to how you heard the prompting of the Lord to be warned and try to warn others, since we know that was led to seeing things that were right, let's make sure we're continuing to do that. And so I put these in terms of if I was sitting down with someone, I'm saying moving forward. In seeking the Lord, seeking his warnings, these are some lessons. These are some things I would do. Let me share those. Just a few of them. One is I would practice the art of hearing. So one of the lessons on being warned, trying to warn, and seeing is I would continue to practice the art of hearing. And what I mean by this is when we talk about seeking the Lord, hearing from the Lord, it's not a science Unfortunately, I can't tell you step one. No one can tell you step one, two, three, and four, right? I wish it was. It's not a science. It's an art. It's something you've got to get a feel for it. I didn't really want to be a pastor and preach. I would have loved to have been a worship leader. I tried. I tried to learn the guitar. And I had a friend who's an excellent musician, professional musician today, traveling with a Christian band currently. And I sit down with him, and he's trying to teach me rhythm. And he says, Jake, some people's got it, some people don't, and you don't. Now, this doesn't mean that some people can hear from the Lord, some people can't. That's not what I mean here. But what I mean is, it's not just something that I could like scientifically step out and learn how to get a feel for. And that only happens over time and in repetition. It's seeking the Lord, hearing from Him, responding in obedience, and repeat. Does that make sense? Seek the Lord, listen, obey, and repeat. So that's one lesson. Practice the art of hearing. The other is to study, 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 and study some more in the Word I think really leaning into something we've touched on before is leaning into letting Scripture speak for itself. I hope you caught a few episodes back. I said we need to put ourselves in neutral and let the Scriptures push us around. But continue seeking the Lord in His Word. Another one along those lines is let the truth slap you around. (laughs) Okay, what I mean by that is, don't just find your guy, your position, and read everything in that and nothing else. Don't just find your part of Scripture and just read that. But we need to test things. That's what I loved about in class, in seminary. I don't agree with everything that I was taught, especially on eschatology. But being pushed to re-examine things is good. I encourage you. You may have found what you believe is the right position in terms of eschatology. But be willing to at least 
hear out something else and then test it. The next one, I already mentioned it, but to seek, listen, obey, and repeat daily. It's basically taking those things that you're practicing this art of hearing, seeking the Lord. You're combining that with the word and not just the passages you want to read. And you're then turning it into this process of seeking in the spirit, seeking in the word, listening, leaning in, then obeying and repeat. And that leads us to the next one, which is really where we ended in the last episode, but trust the voice you know. I think that's where we really need to be, especially if you, before COVID, were tracking and being warned and trying to warn others, and now that we've seen it. One last thing, write it down. Write down what the Lord is revealing to you. Write it down. I believe COVID was a warning shot, a wake-up call. I wish many more would wake up, but you're awake. And since we are awake, we have the responsibility to be watchmen. Therefore, what can we learn from that warning shot? So if you look back and how the Lord revealed things to you, make sure you're continuing to do that. And if you're new to this preparing, it starts with seeking the Lord. Unfortunately, it doesn't start with this podcast. It doesn't start with a great eschatology book or a conference. It starts with seeking the Lord. Thanks for listening to Bible Prophecy Daily. We hope you learned something valuable today. Be sure to subscribe wherever you heard this podcast so you never miss an episode. 